Motorized bikes are fun little mopeds that are cheap and easy to build and maintain, and they are amazing on gas. But the one thing these bikes are lacking is power. While most of these bikes have the capability of reaching speeds of over 35 miles per hour, pretty straight out of the box, if you are looking to climb any sort of hills or want something with a little bit more kick, you'll definitely want to upgrade a few parts. This will be a complete list of virtually every modification you can do to a motorized bike. Now, before you do any performance mods, there are primarily three mods that you need to do uh, before you start adding power to your engine. The first being a short CNC intake. This eliminates air leaks by having a well sealing surface while also having an O-ring so the carburetor seals thoroughly compared to the stock intake that has a bunch of divots and crevices. This also allows you to tune the carburetor much easier. Due to the CNC intake being a bit shorter than the stock one, it also performs noticeably better and increases throttle response. The second upgrade, the stock spark plug that comes with these engines are trash. The spark plug is a must to upgrade. Not only does this greatly increase reliability of your engine, but noticeably increases power and greatly increases the ease of tuning. The third upgrade is an alternate way of mounting your sprocket if that be using a hub adapter or mounting directly to the disc brake mounts if your hub has them using the stock pineapple joint is a pain and they need consistent maintenance and they are almost impossible to get right and they almost inevitably destroy your wheels and they break spokes a hub adapter clamps directly to the center of the hub instead of the spokes, and they are insanely easy to install. Notice, a hub adapter will only work if your hub has a constant diameter, which means that the width of your hub needs to be the same diameter throughout. It's also worth noting that there are only specifically two sizes of hub adapters, unless you get one custom made. These sizes are one inch diameter and one and a half inch diameter for your hub diameter. So before using a hub adapter, definitely get out your caliper and look to see if your diameter of your hub meets these requirements. Now, just a warning, before you go and do any performance mods, I highly recommend that you consider the safety of your bike. Firstly, I wanna make clear that it is that even a stock engine, the coaster brakes on some of these beach cruisers or the stock brakes on other bikes uh, are out of their element and will quickly burn up and overheat. Now, concerning brakes, if you plan to not go overboard and only do a few performance mods or just keep your engine stock, uh, I highly recommend upgrading your brakes, at least C-clamp brakes at minimum. However, for those that are determined to squeeze every last drop of power from this engine or just do a few performance mods, disc brakes are definitely recommended if not required. If you want incredible stopping power, check out the Smolik Performance Pit Bike Brake uh, Caliper Setup, which is what I'm using on most of my bikes. Now, after you have done the previous mods and have properly broken in your engine, it is time for the real performance mods. The fourth on the list is Balanced Crank. I personally balance these cranks in all my engines before I run them, but others don't. While this mod is skipped over and forgotten by many builders, it is one of the most effective mods out there. By just drilling a few specific holes in your crank, you'll notice a huge increase in performance all over the board. Not only will your RPMs skyrocket, but the throttle response will be so much better. Your engine will run so much smoother, and it'll even uh, minimize internal engine wear, etc. 
I'm putting this first on the list because this is a virtually free mod that will hugely affect performance without any other further upgrades. It is also worth noting that down the road, when you balance your crank, every performance mod will be much more beneficial than if you did not balance your crank. The exhaust. An exhaust is one of the simplest upgrades you can do to a motorized bike. It increases power exponentially and usually only involves just picking out the right exhaust. And installing only consists of removing two bolts and putting them back on. Not only is it simple to install, but it really brings out the beast in any engine. Sixth on the list is porting and decking. Many builders think of porting as merely polishing the ports. And while this helps, it's not very noticeable. What really gets the power cranked up is a complete redesign of the port map. A proven way to get a ton of power is by raising your exhaust, raising your transfers, lowering your intake, etc., etc. Um, and I'm skipping over most of the key details for porting. I will discuss this further in a future post. So uh, look out for that. Now, after you've done your porting, you will also want to set your squish gap and deck your cylinder. Now, after doing all of this, you'll get a ton more fuel into your engine, your engine will breathe better, and you'll get substantially more power throughout the board. Uh, and just like the balanced crank, when you start doing more upgrades, it'll be the power will be more and more noticeable than if you did not do any porting. Seventh is premium gas. Now, especially when you do any sort of decking to the cylinder or port work, uh, 87 pump gas will hold your engine back or maybe even damage the engine if you go too far with porting or anything like that. If you've done either porting or decking to the cylinder, you'll find the engine will run much smoother and burn more consistently with higher octane fuel. If you are running low octane fuel, such as 87 in your engine that runs at a higher RPM than stock or a higher compression, you will get detonation due to the lower octane fuel igniting prematurely an issue that is resolved when running higher octane fuel. Eighth on the list, the reed valve. Now while a reed valve doesn't increase performance on its own, when paired with porting and exhaust, uh, you'll find a difference in throttle response, smoothness of the power delivery, and all over noticeable performance increase. Instead of an intake port that opens and closes with the skirt of the piston, a reed valve is a one-way valve that opens and closes with the suction of the engine. This is not only more efficient and, than the traditional piston port, but also opens based on the engine, so the timing is always precise and always dialed in. Installing a reed valve is not hard at all and requires requires either a windowed piston, which is a hole in the piston that allows the intake to be open at all times, or a third transfer, which is a trench that is carved into the side of the cylinder underneath of the intake. There are three main types of reed valves, the OZ reed, the G2 reed, and the Dio reed. Unless you want a terrible running engine, stay away from the Dio reed. The G2 reed run it's very simply and has the largest variety of intakes and applications and has a very well-balanced performance. The OZ reed, however, doesn't have as many sized intakes but has a smoother power delivery and is a bit more reliable and less prone to air leaks. When windowing your piston, don't cut the hole too close to the piston rings and leave enough meat at the bottom of the piston so it doesn't break off. The window should be no wider than the intake port, or else it will gouge the cylinder. Ninth on the list, the carburetor. Usually, the stock carburetor shows its limitations on a stock engine, 
but it is clearly out of its element after a few mods. There are many types of carburetors that are applicable on a motorized bike. When upgrading your carburetor, pay attention to the size of the slide, the inner diameter of the intake, the adjustments, and make sure the jets are sized correctly and readily available. A few recommended carburetors include the Makuni VM18 carburetor, a lot of the Delordo carburetors, the Nabi PE17 and PE19, and the PZ19 carburetors. Any of these will run much better than stock, increase torque, increase top end power, and they'll have a lot more adjustments, all over making a much better running engine. Now with your carburetor, notice that when you upgrade uh, or do any other performance mods, you'll need to adjust the fuel mixture screws and change the jets to make it run appropriately with your engine. It is also worth noting that a carburetor with a too large uh, slide will run terribly, and so is the case with the carburetor that is also too small. A carburetor for a traditional China doll engine should not be smaller than 17 millimeters and no larger than 21 millimeters. Tenth on the list, CNC cylinder head. Many people upgrade the cylinder heads before the majority of the mods previously mentioned. If you haven't already, you want to do this. A CNC head will increase performance, but it will also increase cooling capacity and make your head gasket seal much better. 11th on the list, the ignition system. At this point, you've squeezed out almost as much power possible out of one of these little engines. But if you still want more power, you can always upgrade the ignition system. Now, even if you extremely mod out one of these engines, the stock ignition system will do just fine. However, for the name of performance, there is always something better. The stock CEDI doesn't have any real ignition curve for optimal performance. And with that being said, a CDI that has a more aggressive ignition curve will significantly improve the power and smoothness of the engine. CDIs to stay away from include anything from Bikeberry. The 12th upgrade on the list is an upgraded case. An upgraded engine case, such as a CNC engine case, will have a tighter clearances and higher build quality. This gives a good bit more performance compared to the standard Chinese cast case. A CNC case also allows for more porting, larger crank, larger bearings, and better lubrication. The case read setup. If you are still using the stock case, or you are considering buying a CNC case, I highly recommend looking into a case read setup. This allows the fuel to take a shortcut directly into the crankcase, which allows for more fuel and air to enter the engine. This creates more power and due to the direct path, also increases efficiency and throttle response. Warning! Modifying the stock engine case to use a case read setup is very hard to do. You could do it yourself, but it may be worth getting yourself a case read CNC case instead. This will eliminate the hassle in building your own and will perform much better than a DIY job. Hybrids. A hybrid engine refers to a cylinder and piston from another engine that is being used on a motorized bike bottom end. People have used top ends all the way from 100cc chainsaws to 50cc sport scooters, and each of these have their own pros and cons. Depending on the top end, you can see a ton of performance gain by doing this. Many people do this method, build hybrid engines uh, before a lot of the previous mods previously mentioned, but some top ends require special CNC cases, hence their placement toward the end of the list. Last on the list, stroker cranks. With any engine, increasing the bore width and the stroke length is a recipe for maximum power. 
If you have undergone a hybrid swap to your engine, you have already gotten your bore taken care of. Now, for more torque and power, get yourself a longer stroked crank. If done correctly, this mod increases performance and torque by a large margin. Now, to handle all this power, you'll need an upgraded clutch. Now, there are two primary clutches on the market. There's the HD clutch sold by an RDM, and there's the SAF clutch sold by DLH Performance. Now, in terms of performance, the SAF clutch uh, performs a bit better than the HD clutch uh, from my experience. However, the HD clutch is a bit cheaper, though when it comes to clutches, I highly recommend spending the little extra uh, and getting the better clutch. So I recommend getting the SAF clutch. Here are some honorable mentions. Race fuel. By using race fuels such as alcohol or other unconventional fuels, it can they can increase power by a good deal, but there are some downsides. Firstly, these fuels can be very expensive, while also proving impractical to most. It is also a pain to tune an engine to run correctly on unconventional fuels. Nitrous. It is common knowledge that nitrous gives an engine a bit more oomph. While this is the case, there are major downsides to this. Firstly, you cannot use just any nitrous, and the stuff that can be used for an engine is fairly expensive. However, even if you got some and installed it correctly on your bike, it can be detrimental to an engine if overused. Turbocharging. While turbocharging is very common in a car scene, it is a bit more complicated with smaller engines. Firstly, a turbocharger or supercharger requires pressurized lubrication, which is very complicated with a motorized bike, requiring a completely separate lubrication system. It also requires a lot of tubing and fabrication, making it pretty dang unreliable and not very effective for making good power, unless you are truly eager for performance. Thank you boys so much for watching, and if you want to see any more videos like this, leave a comment below on what you want to watch. If you have any questions, concerns, or you just want to chat, message me on Reddit at Sub2AMB Garage, on Facebook at Noah Alger, or NoahAlger at gmail.com.